There we go. Hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> if you can hear and see us, please let us know in the chat so that we're not talking out to the void. <laughs> yeah. I can't see the chat, so. Yeah. I'll there we go. Be, okay. Be One here. person can hear and see us, so that is great. <laughs> So I am Kaylee Gray, I'm from Get Messy, and I'm here for a messy conversation with Tiffany, and I'm really excited to talk to her because she is one of my personal favorite artists, and obviously one of Get Messy's favorite artists too. So hi, Tiffany. Hello. Can you give an introduction to yourself for anyone who hasn't heard of you? Okay, so I'm Tiffany Julia. You'll probably know me by my Instagram handle. It's Ariel Lovely. Prior to that, I was Aries Trash. So one of those two, you probably know who I am. Um, this is my first time on the Get Messy creative team, and I'm excited for this year. Um, my first Get Messy conversation. Um, I live in New York. And I do things. I create things. I don't know how else to explain me. Um, I make a lot of stuff, basically. And if it's not art, into craft, like paper crafting, so scrapbooking, project life, all that fun stuff. Um, I'm a writer and a musician, so I, I write songs. Um, what else do I do? But yeah, so I basically create things. I also have a YouTube channel. It's the same, Tiffany Julia, if you know me from my YouTube channel. Yeah, that's so, me in a nutshell. Let's talk about let's talk about your Instagram handle right in the beginning. Cause talk about why you changed it and what the meaning is behind it. Okay, so I was Aries trash for a very long time. Aries trash. It was just um, when AOL had AIM. That was a. It was just one of those screen names that I just kind of came up with, like in high school. I think it was, um, and I'm in, and then trash. I don't know where that came from, <laughs> to be quite honest. I have no idea. It just sounded cool when you're like an angsty teenager. So I put them together and made a screen name out of that. And it just carried it like it carried, um, at some point I did define it. Like it was, uh, I, I forgot the definition. It was like a girl born in the first sign of the Zodiac who has a tendency to spew. Up. <laughs> so that's what the trash part was, you know. So, um, I built a website around that name and it was just, a, like, it was mostly a blog where I did a lot of, I actually did a lot of digital collages on that particular site. Um, and I was on DeviantArt and that's what I would do. Um, and so it kind of fit that whole thing that I was doing because the digital collages were from scanned images and like paper wrappers and stuff like that. And then just did, and I did a lot of graphic design and it just kept, it just kept until it, you know, my site evolved and then everything I used Aries Trash to log into everything. And then one day I was just like, what does this name mean? Like I kind of looked at my, I was like redoing the way my site looked and I was just like, what does this mean in terms of like what I create now? And it, I couldn't like, I couldn't remember what, what it meant and what it, you know, like what it meant to me at that moment. So I was like, well, I think it's a time for a change. Um, but prior to like moving my site over to like a WordPress site, um, I actually built a WordPress site and my blog was called Ariel Love. And it's actually from a song lyric that I wrote. I wrote a song called Wanderlust. And the lyric is, um, what is the <laughs> lyric? That is a great question. It's something, <laughs> let's see, what is the lyric? The lyric is, um, here we go on the road off to nowhere to a place where the wind blows through your hair an enchanted aerial love affair. And I liked that aerial love affair thing. 
I think I Googled it and there's like some band called Ariel Love Affair or something like that. And so I was just like, well, I'll just take off the affair part and just put Ariel Love and then stylistically um, join the two L's because it just looks prettier when you do it like for a logo or anything. And so I named my blog that. And then at some point I merged my, my, you know, like sort of that graphic design collage website with my WordPress blog and just switched everything over to Aries Trash because I already had the URL. And so Ariel Love kind of like, it dwindled, like it just disappeared. But when I was thinking about changing my name again, I, that kept coming up, just that Ariel Love it, I don't, it's something about it fit. I, I, I did take it from one of my songs, like my song lyrics. And then I had asked on Instagram, like what sort of words people would describe my art. And I got, um, I got airy, like it's very airy and flowy and pretty and floral. And um, what's the word that I don't know how to pronounce correctly? Oh yeah, Ethereal, I, know, I, know. I, I think, <laughs> ethereal. <laughs> I think it's ethereal and like all that stuff. And so it, it's, there was, there was a sense of air, like and lightness to it. And I thought the word aerial, which means being in the air, like it fits. So it was always there in front of me, that name. And then it's just, I, you know, didn't, it didn't really connect until I asked people on Instagram, like what they thought, like, you know, how they would describe my style. And then of course, when I went to go search everything, Ariel Love was taken like everywhere, <laughs> except the URL because I had it. I had ariellove.com, but then since everything else was taken, I didn't end up using it. And so I asked my friends like, what can be, like, what can I use um, instead of Ariel Love? And they're just like, just write like a L-Y at the end, just make it lovely. You know, it's the same thing except more. And I'm just like, okay, cool. And that's how that was settled. And now I'm Ariel Lovely, and I think it fits better. I mean, ideally, I would love TiffanyJulia.com, but apparently that's yeah. taken too. It's just a yeah. it's a parked go it's a parked domain, and I hate those. And I'm yeah. just like, that just means that somebody has the URL and they just put a random like thing on the homepage, and they're not even using it for yeah. anything. Give me it's C. Com is a parked domain. I mean, you can domain. record. Oh really? I hate, it. I hate it. You can off like you can request to like buy it, but then you have to pay like thousands of dollars just yeah. for a URL. It's That's terrible. So cool. Oh, but yeah. So that's how that evolves and changed, and and it has it. There's more deeper meaning to the aerial love because I started that blog. I started my blog that I currently have now. Um, to be about love. I started it January 2013 because it was a few months after my dad passed away. And this is when I first started getting into more of the paper crafting and art journaling. And I decided that I was going to start a blog and explore the idea of love. And so the aerial love kind of fit that. Um, and it was after I read a book by Jeanette Winterson. Winterson, I think is her last name. It's called Written on the Body. And it's a great read. It's a great read. I actually pulled it out last night to share a quote with my mother who was talking. She was talking about somebody who had lost their husband and stuff like that. But the book is about a person. It's, you don't know if it's a man or a woman who loses their love to, I forgot, she was, the person was ill, like her partner was ill. Um, and the whole book is just this person going back and remembering everything. And it's the first line of it is like the first line of the book is why is the measure of love loss? Like that's the, it's like a question and that's the first sentence. And so that the whole story and everything revolves around love and losing that love. And I had read that and it just sparked this mm. blog. And so that's mm -hmm. kind of another backstory to the Ariel love name. So it has a lot of layers that that name, but I think it sticks like it's stuck and it fits better. It fits my style better. Definitely that. I yeah. Because it's just. So that's where that name. Changed yeah, there's definitely from. multiple levels to it. Like there's clearly no levels to mine. Like there's all. 
Yeah, I just named after myself. Otherwise, okay. So, Tiffany, tell me why you love creating. I don't. It's just something that I have to do. Like I don't know if you have that tend. Like have you ever felt that tendency that you have to do something? Like I can't go a day without making something, and it 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 can be something that's like just writing down like a lyric like on my phone mm. like it comes it just like pops into my head it has to go down somewhere and that's i'll be good i'll be good if i just like wrote like that one sentence or if i wrote a paragraph for something or even if i just put paint on a page or cut up some things and stick it down like sometimes i don't know what to art journal and i'll just look at my page and I have all these pretty things on my desk and I'm just like, well, let's just stick that here and let's put the sticker here. And it's just no rhyme or reason. It's just me just sticking stuff down because I, I just need to do that. that it's, it's like a mm. compulsion, I guess. It's like I'm compelled to create something every single day. That and I get bored really easily. So I tend to like <laughs> hop around with different things that I create, but like, I just have to. So that do kind that. of, that so kind of leads on to my next question, okay. which is um, so you do like a whole bunch of different type of creatings. You've got the art journaling, you've got the memory keeping and documenting, and you've also got singing, which I think like that is a very for art journalists like a unique way of creating. How do you how do you this is probably a stupid question from someone who doesn't make music and all of that. Uh, but how do you decide which to do? If you've got that like itching and that like burning desire to create, how do you decide, okay, this is how I'm gonna channel it? Usually when I pick up my guitar to like play or usually it's just, yeah, me having the urge to pick up my guitar and just strum it. And then maybe if that'll lead into writing a song, it leads into writing a song. It's usually when I'm at my lowest. So when I feel really, really depressed about something or something doesn't feel right, like I don't have to be depressed, but it's just I'm working through something emotionally or mentally or something happened to somebody that I know and like I don't know how to work through any of those feelings, I always turn to music. Like I always pick up my guitar and I'll maybe play a cover song or I'll just strum a bunch of chords together. And then from that, you know, from whatever that mo like whatever I'm feeling when I'm strumming the chords, if I like something, I'll write down the, that chord progression, and then I keep playing it, and then I'll start, I'll start scatting to this to what I'm playing, so it's just gibberish coming out of my mouth just to get some sort of melody or like, yeah, some sort of melody really, and then maybe I'll start putting words to it. But it usually comes from when I just, I don't know how to handle something um, but I usually go to music and then once I'm done with you know the melodic everything that's in writing a song I always go to my art journal because then that make going to the art journal and just sloshing paint or papers and everything into my art journal that makes me feel better as well it's I don't know it's like a what is the term I don't think the term is it piggyback the term like so they like every a time I do, I'll... no, I guess I, I don't know what the term is. I think it's piggyback, okay. but I could be terribly wrong. <laughs> but it's like music, and then I need to do the art part, like the the mm. you know the more tactical, feely art part, and it just um. They both. Oh, it's that other <laughs> word. I'm like losing words. Uh, <laughs> It's not reassure, that's not the word, but they, you know, they kind of not, I guess the art part reinforces mm -hmm. what I, the therapy that I do with mm -hmm. music. It's just, they, I always notice that, that I always go to music first, whenever I feel like some sort of emotional distress or pull to go to the music. I always do that first. And then once, you know, my fingers hurt or, you know, whatever, I put that down and I always go to mm -hmm. my art journal afterwards it's just always it's just that's how it works yeah you see you're answering so, my questions in advance because i was going to ask you how they tie into each other 
<laughs> yeah, that that's how that tie in. It's just because I normally my art journaling is um, it's more therapeutic than actually creating mm. art. So that's that's how I process, you know, journaling in my journals and stuff. It's just more of I feeling something that I don't know how to deal with. I don't know how to get out and I'll do it. But then, you know, I have other times where it's just like, I want to do something fun. So I'm going to stick some things in an art journal and, you know, call it art journaling. You know, that's that. But um, a lot of times it's just more of a therapeutic thing. And I think, um, you know, like memory keeping is the same way, but well, it started out the same way. It's like therapy, but now it's more of, I need to get my stories down mm -hmm. sort of thing. You know, that's kind of become the focus. So art journaling kind of took over that. I need to do this to make me feel calmer because I do, I suffer from anxiety. And I think a lot of us art journalers suffer from some sort of anxiety. And I find that, you know, music helps me tremendously. Like that's the first thing that I always go to is play because it makes me feel better when I play my guitar. I don't even have to be singing or writing anything. It's just playing it just helps me feel so much better. And then just sort of to get to still be in that nice feel good place. And, you know, my fingers hurt because I play a steel string guitar. So that's it's tougher on your hands. I'm just OK, let me not make my fingers bleed let me go you know play with paint and so that kind of that's how they kind of mix together yeah. they're therapy mm -hmm. they're fun outlets because sometimes i pick it up just for you know fun too but i think the most the most impactful is just dealing with emotions and my anxiety and sort of just to calm me down is sort of like me focus on something and not uh everything else that goes into your head when you're you know, having an anxious moment. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Um, Kimby in the comments, who is from Trinidad, which is freaking awesome. Um, she says that with her at the moment, music is the opposite. She says it's stressing her out. So the art, the art journal helps her process her feelings. <laughs> yeah, I, I never have that. I mean, um, do, does she, do you play? Like, does she play an instrument or something? Kimmy, what, do you do? <laughs> what do you do? Tell us. Or is it just like listening to music? Because I know some people listen to music to kind of calm down or de-stress and stuff. I rarely listen mm. to music. Yeah, I don't, but I mean, I don't make I think I music up, so. <laughs> I mean, I listen to music like when I'm traveling, like if I'm going somewhere, like to my friend's house, and I'm either walking or taking the train. I have music. It's usually U2, because that's what I listen to, is like oh, really no. old <laughs> U2 music. I mean, I have their newest album that I've been listening to, but it's generally their older stuff. Um, and that's what I listen to. And it's funny enough, that's what I play when I go to my guitar. I play U2 covers, and then I go into playing my own things. But yeah. <laughs> I don't really listen to music. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, okay, so I've got a question for you. <laughs> what do you do when you don't know what to make? Do you ever not know what to do? I do. There are times when I'm just like, I have no idea what I'm going to make. What I usually do, what I help, look, this is a new thing that I've been doing when I like don't know what to make. I create a kit. I create, a, I like, I mean, I'm a memory keeper too. So my, my stash is huge. I mean, it's probably not as big as some other people, but it's pretty big. I have a lot of paper and washi tape and paints and all sorts of things. Um, when I don't like when I, I usually get overwhelmed for some reason when I don't know what to make. It's just like I had, you know, I get overwhelmed with all of my stuff and I'm just like, I have all this stuff, but I don't know what to make with, you know, the supplies that I have. And so what I tend to do is I tend to take out like maybe an hour and go through everything and put together a little kit uh, to work with. So if it's for like an art journal, I would think of a color scheme or a theme 
um, and roll with that. Like, so if my color scheme is my favorite colors, pink, mint, and white, and black and white, with a little dash of gold, I will look through all of my things and pull out papers and embellishments and like like old book pages and stuff like that that kind of mix together with those the, with my color scheme. So it's just my color scheme. So I might have gold glitter, um, maybe black and white ink, and then the paints would be my mint and pinks, and then the papers would match all of that. And usually I'll if I look through stickers, I find things that match, but you know, a lot of the times, like especially scrapbooking stickers will have like different phrases on it or icons and that would spark something. Like it will spark a theme or an idea. And then I just kind of work on that. Like I work to build up my kit based on all of those things. And then once I have a little kit, I have something that I can use to create. So I'm not overwhelmed with all of my supplies and in the process, I always come up with something like there's always an idea that sparks just from looking through all of my supplies that I have in my home. It's just something will come up then. And I'm just like, Ooh, I want to make mm -hmm. that. And then that's how I go and make it. So that's usually how I get out of the hole. I have no idea what to make. I kind of rummage through my, my stash of stuff and pull out kits. I have a lot of kits because sometimes I'll pull out a kit and I'll put it aside. Oh, I'm going to do this with this kit. Blah, blah, blah. And then something else. Sometimes I start making two different kits. Like it's ridiculous. And I'll pull that out. And what I originally started with, I don't end up actually using. So I'll like put it in a Ziploc bag and leave it for something else and then work on something else. Or sometimes I make the kits and I don't want to use them. I want to use them for something else. And I go create something else that pops into my head because it just helps bring ideas. I, that's just how mm -hmm. they come to me. It's just looking at the supplies and just things will pop up and I get ideas that way. And it's also very calming just to like organize all your stuff, yeah. like rearranging things. I don't know. <laughs> it's just really like, ah. And so the overwhelming feeling kind of subsides and then you can think clearer when you're just kind of like, Oh, this goes here. This goes here. That's usually how I deal with not knowing how that or if, like if if it's art journaling, if I don't another way, if it's, you know, yeah, if it's art journaling and I don't know what to do in my art journal, I do something else creative. So maybe I'll work on um, project life or I'll work in my memory planner or mm. I will write like a short story or I'll go and write a song or just play like I do something else creative and then come back to that and then sometimes I I have nothing creative like I don't want to just like there's just nothing there so normally lately I've been watching movies but usually I would go read a book and that would spark something but it's been movies lately I would just go and watch even it's a movie even if it's a movie that I've already seen before um I'll just go and watch that and for some reason, I pull from other creative, like what other creatives do, either it's either in the written form or in a movie, and that just kind of sparks something. So like, I get that question a lot whenever I perform a song to somebody, oh, where'd you get your idea for a song? Like, I have a song called Imogen, and it's a very dark song. And I, <laughs> my producer asked me one time, where did this idea come from? And I'm just like, I was watching an episode of Degrassi, <laughs> and which is the Canadian teen show. I was watching an episode of Degrassi, and the girl Imogen, her dad has like Alzheimer's, and he killed the dog <laughs> by accident, and like that's that's where the song came from. Even though the song has nothing to do with, you know, that episode of Degrassi, it's just that's what inspired it. And then I named it Imogen because it was her story in this show that inspired that so that's usually something you know that's how a lot of my ideas come is just I'm watching something or I'm reading something and it just oh and then I twisted it it's usually not about that but it's just inspired whatever I'm mm -hmm. gonna create and then that's how that's how that works <laughs> I love that. that's 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 how you steal like an artist 
you <laughs> you get from other you know you get inspired by other creative things and then you just twist it exactly. and like things that are not necessarily creative like you're not stealing from like an, a creative instagram account you know you're stealing from that weird ass talk show <laughs> a teen <laughs> show <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, Courtney got really excited when you started talking about supplies, and um, so she wants to know what is in your art kit in general. Like, what is your favorite supply? What is the longest favorite new? Oh, like your your all time favorite. What's your favorite new one? What is something that you want to try? Basically, she's getting you to talk more about supplies. <laughs> about supplies. I think my all time favorite supply is white doilies, white paper doilies. I use them on everything. They're on everything. I think they're on like almost every art journal page, um, every scrapbooking layout, every project life thing. They're just everywhere, everywhere. Those are my favorite. Um, I like all different kinds of sizes. I have doilies in different colors, but I always go to the white ones or like the off-white ones, like the ivory ones. Um, but yeah, those are my all-time favorite. That's what I have a lot of and I use all the time. Um, my new favorite supply is modeling paste or texture paste. Like I've been shopping for stencils because I have very few stencils and you need stencils to do the fancy modeling paste thing. Oh my God, it's awesome. That is my new favorite. Um, and then like general supplies that I like, um, I like acrylic paints. I have, I only ever, well, I've only ever tried watercolor acrylic and oil. Um, oil is just too, it, it takes forever to dry. It's just, I have no patience for it. Um, acrylic, I like it. I think it was always my favorite um, besides, I, I don't really like watercolor. I'm not a watercolor person, um, but I like acrylics. Mm. And so I have a lot of acrylic paint. Um, and then of course I like all the pastel colors because they're pretty, pretty stuff. Um, what else is my favorite besides that? Um, I really like old book pages. I like just tearing pages out of books and using them. Um, what I'm trying to think. I like magazine images of like models. I think most of my like transfers are always some girl or like a sketch of a girl that I got from a magazine. That is another thing that I think shows up a lot in my art journaling is magazine images of females that doilies paints what else do i use a lot i have a lot of fabric but i don't i mean i think lately fabric has been coming into my art journals um that's like a new thing too but i think the modeling paste takes my new favorite that is awesome so do you have yeah. a, a silhouette portrait or cameo i <sighs> don't I'm actually shopping for one. Yes, I want one, but I don't have got, one. They've got like a stencil thing that you can buy and it, and you can cut out your own stencils, which is amazing. Oh. Yeah, I've been yes. looking. Like, I don't have that much space for it. I really, w I would like a Cameo 3 and this is probably what I'm gonna end up getting is the new Cameo, um, even though that or the portrait, the new portrait, the portrait too, since it's a little mm -hmm. smaller. It's a lot but, smaller. Yeah. I've got that one. It's amazing. I've got that one. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm enabling. Yeah. But like the the stencil <laughs> thing, I used it the other day, and it's life changing. For modeling paste, modeling yeah. paste, life changing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Courtney's asking a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> oh, she says she's she got stencil paper. Okay. Oh. So, let me, let's see. Okay. Do you have a favorite topic, an art journaling topic that's your favorite? Topic? Like theme topic? Yeah. <laughs> um topic and art journaling I don't think so can't even think of anything mm. 
you ever like go in like with a topic in mind or is it just kind of like putting your soul into the paper? I think the only time I think of with the, like go into art journaling with a topic is if I'm following the Get Messy mm. Seasons. And then I guess from the seasons, my favorites, I think my favorite season was the season of fairy tales. I don't know why, but that one was one of my favorites. Um, and I think maybe it has to do with the imagination, everything's all make believe, or like more of um, going into like another world, because it's a fairy tales, you go into this make believe world. I really loved that season's theme. Um, I'm actually really liking the season of kindness only, I think only because I kind of flipped kindness on its head and sort of, instead of looking at the word, I looked at what it felt like and what colors it brought to mind, which was very soft, kind of airy, white, pretty delicate sort of colors and feels and textures. And that's how I've been building up my season of kindness journal is just be by color and texture um, and like icons and stuff, not so much, I don't know, things that I've been looking at it in ways of, um, does this look kind mm -hmm. or is, does this feel kind? Um, and so that's been interesting to play with that theme, but I don't think I actually go like, honestly, I think most of the time, if I'm just not following any season or any prompt or anything, I open up my notebook. It's usually a blank page. Like I do not suffer from blank page syndrome anymore. It's usually a blank page and I look at my supplies and I'm just like, okay, that would look cool here. And then I just start sticking stuff mm -hmm. down. Like it's just I guess, um, an intuitive process to start sticking stuff and whatever happens, happens like that's that I think that's how I usually like go like start off with a page or anything if I'm not following anything it's just it's very intuitive it's just this looks pretty yeah yeah I try to make things that I like yeah. so it's just like I like this so let's play with it more yeah and I think you're really, I only you're really good at it so he's <laughs> <is> working <laughs> that's how I do that yeah and I know not everybody has that ability just to stick things down like I got a comment on one of my Instagram pictures the other day like that said oh I can't I can't just stick stuff down and make it look like something like pretty or whatever and I'm just like that's just how I roll like that's always how I did stuff. It's just, just stick stuff down. Oh, this looks good. Let's just build on it. And usually if I have no idea and I just stick things down that I think look pretty together and I look at it, an idea would always come to, to like to my head. It's just like, oh, let's try this. And sometimes, sometimes I'll try it and it doesn't work. And so I just repeat what I first did before I messed it up and you know, kind of start again. But that's usually, and then, you know, from doing that, like for, for, for many years, it's just, I know what, what would look good. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I tend to repeat that. So sometimes you get stuck in the whole, oh, I've already done this before sort of thing. It's just kind of a habit that you end up doing. And then that's when you just have to, you know, try something new, maybe pick out new colors and. I know I, I always gear towards the same soft pastel -y colors. So sometimes when I gear off and use brighter colors and what was, <laughs> like <laughs> what I did for Katie's class <laughs> with all the bright colors, like I painted the girl's hair blonde. Like I would never <laughs> do that. And she has like orange in her hair. I never use orange. <laughs> and it was just it was like, oh, but you see, it's so like using those bright colors. Yeah, but that's so funny because obviously pastels are like your colors, but like, and for me also, like, I'm very scared of bright colors, but I know that picture that you're talking about that, like, that spread that you're talking about. And yeah, it's still not bright. Like Misty would not call that bright, you know, like, so we've, we've all got our like, yeah. bright levels. <laughs> Well, I was trying to mimic the colors of the napkin that I was using. Mm -hmm. I have, I bought like a pack, 
I think it was like the Mother's Day line at Michael's and they had these napkins with these flat, like the florals, the sketched watercolor florals. And me and florals, like it's just, you know, florals. Oh, it's so pretty, it's a floral. I had to buy, I mean, they were on sale. It was like 60% off at Michael's. So I bought a pack of the napkins. And so I have like a pack of these napkins that I maybe only use like three napkins from. And so I had, I had the napkins in my journal. They were tucked into a page in my journal that I turned to and I'm just like, this would be, I'm like, this would look really cool on the girl's hair or like, you know, coming from the girl's hair. So that's why I pulled it aside. But when you put it down, those napkins, the, the colors are bright. They're brighter than I normally would, you know, use. They're not pastel -y at all. And so it's just like, I have to pull out the brighter colors that I have in my paint drawer and try to use those. And orange is like one of my least favorite colors. and. I can't believe I used orange. Like I didn't have brown. I don't have brown paint. I don't have dark paint. So I think the darkest color that I have is like a navy blue. And that's like the darkest color that I have in paint. So I'm just like, well, I can't paint her hair brown. So let's paint her hair kind of yellowy and mix the orange in so it's not too yellowy. And so that's that's how those colors came. And do you have do you have that sprayed in one of your journals? Aren't you? I do. It's in this one. Oh look, I opened right. it. It's this. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It's this one. So comment yeah. um, in the chat and say if, if you think that's bright or if that is not bright for you, like based <laughs> on your own scale. Heidi in the chat says she doesn't have any pastel colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Debbie yeah, says not I don't bright. know. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know. like to me the or you know, the orange and the bright lime green. Like those are just colors I would never, <laughs> I would never use. You know. Yeah. And it's just, but yeah. So I guess this is the brightest that I probably. There we go. I think would ever... Emily in the chat's got it like spot on. She says it's bright, bright pastel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So <laughs> let's talk about supplies again. I don't know if you can page through your journals while you're talking about it. Because now I feel like I want to look at it, but I also want to talk about this question because it's an exciting question. <laughs> okay. But the yeah. question is about your supplies. Do you have organizing tips? How do you store it? Do you ever cut it? What is your approach to that? Um, I'm always changing up stuff in my room. Let us let this siren pass. I don't know if you can hear it. I live in New York, so this is like my life on a daily basis. And I'm surprised that is the first one you hear. It's very interesting. Um, I'm always changing up everything. So, um, like my craft space is literally a tiny, I think it's like 30 by 30 inches, inch desk in my bedroom. Um, and so I have one side, like what I'm looking at now is just all craft stuff. Um, I have kind of like an, it's like a nightstand. Oh wait, we wanted to look at my journals, right? Let me just, oh. Uh, <laughs> if it's like a lot of concentrating, maybe we can. Yeah, it's uh, I have like a nightstand that has like all of my paints in it. Like there's a drawer in it, and I don't have that many paints. Again, I only buy colors that I like and I know that I would use. I do have some brighter paints that I picked up because I don't know they were those cute little paints from Target that come in the cute little jars. Actually, this is that yellow is kind of one of them. Um, I don't really use that color very much anymore. Um, and I have, so that whole drawer is all mediums and paint. So I have watercolor paints and tubes and the acrylic paints. And then I have all my mediums like gesso and uh, gel medium and my modeling paste. So all of kind of like the wet materials are in that one drawer. So I don't have that much. And then on top of that, I have like a giant thing of washi, like one of those acrylic drawer things full of washi tapes. And then on top of that, I have a basket of um, 
alpha alpha stickers and thickers and stuff. So I kind of keep things organized based on what they are. Um, so that whole basket, all of it is just thickers and alphas, and that's what's in that one little basket. Um, and then I have one of those Rascog carts that I bought because everybody was buying them, and that's why I bought it. <laughs> Um, and it was a pretty mint color, so I had to get it. And that, I have it sectioned off too. So I have things that are sectioned and everything sort of stays with what it is. So the top is all, it's like a little thing of Project Life cards. And that's all that's on the top. And then I have things behind it that are also scrapbooking. So I would have like those uh, 6 by 12 sticker sheets there and chipboard, the 12 by 12 chipboards. And then I have other little stickers that don't fit in a recipe tin. So I have a recipe tin that holds all of my, what is it, the four by six sticker sheets. And that's where all of it is. Um, and that's in my second tier, which I kind of have like a little organizing tray full of puffy stickers and more dimensional stickers. And then I collect um, the pasta sauce jars. So once the pasta sauce is done, I wash them out and I use those mason jars because I don't want to pay like a dollar per jar when I can just recycle. Um, and I use those to hold my color pencils. So I have one big one that's all color pencils. And then I have another one that's all drawing pencils. And then uh, my paint brushes are in another one. So I kind of keep um, things that are similar together in one in a section. So on my last tier of my Razcog cart, I have a basket full of acrylic stamps. So that's where all the stamps are. That's where all my stamp pads are. They're just in a basket down there. What else do I have? And then I have a separate basket next to that filled with sticker sheets that don't fit into my little recipe tin. Um, so that's how I kind of have, have all of that organized. This one is one of Kaylee's favorites. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, like all of them. But, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I, I I sort out my paper by color and yeah. So I have one, I have those little 12 by 12 iris containers. And one of them is literally just paper that's pink, mint, and pastel. And like black and white. <laughs> like that's the whole bin it's just those color papers and then i have another bin that's vintage paper like vintage so i have a lot of prima papers prima tends to do a lot of the vintage stuff so prima has a bin but i also mix in like other vintage papers into that bin too so anything that has sort of like a ivory kind of like that old like this like that old book kind of hue to it like the off-white they all go into that vintage bin and then I have a bin that's all like vellum or specialty paper. And then I have another bin that's like random papers that don't fit the color scheme. And so that's kind of how I section things off really. And then I have, I do have a big art journaling bin that has like found papers and magazine clippings and mm. tissue paper and all the stuff that I normally would like to play with different mediums and stuff go into that one little bin and it's just I call it my art journaling bin it's with my cases of beads because I have those sectional but basically everything that kind of goes together I kind of put everything into groups and then put them in some sort of organizing container mm -hmm. that's how I kind of organize my space so that I know I'm like oh yeah it's in that it's in it's in the pastel paper color bin or oh yeah I have like a rack full of sequins and um, resin pieces and buttons. I'm like, oh yeah, it's in that rack with all the little tiny pieces. So these pages, these were like a, they were like a deer series. So this one I think was deer shadows. Like each day I did something there, I don't remember. These pages you can see are actually on Kaylee's website. And most of them if not all of them have image transfers in it. This one was one of my favorites. Mm. So pretty. So this was the first art journal 
that I did not make that I filled up. It took me a while. It took me like maybe two years <laughs> because I usually t I tend to make my journals. So mm -hmm. these guys, this one was, yeah, and there's a few more. And that's a moleskin gridded one, right? This is actually a Peter Popper press. Oh. Uh, so it's it's an A5 size. So it's a little wider than the moleskin. And I like the A5 size because mm -hmm. for some reason it's more, to me it's more like squared or symmetrical. I don't know what, I don't, I don't know. So when I open it up, it's A4. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole canvas is A4. So... I like it better than the moleskin. So I have a, I have a new one that I think only has, this one has all of my transference stuff in it. Mm. That's the, this one's not filled yet. But that one was my first fill. Cause everything else here I think is all, is all handmade journals. Like this one is my current one that I'm using. It is a secret garden book that I just altered. So I have put all my pages in into this one. Um, and you've got um, a tutorial on YouTube with that journal, right? So that one, no. I don't think wow. so. Your season of kindness one is on YouTube, right? Yeah. Mm. This one, this my season of kindness one mm. is like this little fabric. I have it in a TN, but um, it's like this little fabric cover. I have a lace pocket here. This is season of kindness, and I have like a four part video series showing you exactly how I made this little mm -hmm. journal. So it even has like a little, a little tip, I guess tip in, even though it's, it's built right into it. This was, this was my mandala. I used a doily. I don't think I ever shared this one on Instagram, but this was for, I think Claire's uh, tutorial. Mm -hmm. I used a, well, you can't even see it with this thing in here, but I used a doily. It's beautiful. And then drew things, drew things around the doily. Um, I'll put because, you know, all your links into the chat. And obviously when it goes up again on the Game AC site, I'll have all the links there for everyone. But yeah, this one you can see how exactly I made it from the fabric cover. Mm -hmm. I show you how to do the fabric cover to how I picked my papers and everything. This one I started with like a kit. So I put it's that idea of creating a kit before I start on something, that's how this one came about. Um, I thought of kindness and again, ki I'm thinking about kindness in terms of color and um, texture and stuff like that. So I picked out everything that looked kind and I created this little, my journal out of that. But let's see, all of my journals here, I think it, a lot of them that are in TNs, are also made because mm -hmm. like, you know the this one was more of like a scrapbooky sort of uh, journal. I used a lot of I think this was Maggie Holmes. It was a Maggie Holmes collection that I used for this one. This one's hand. I think they're all handmade. <laughs> um, this one is my season of words, which was that season was an altered book, and so I put fabric on mine mm -hmm. and that was this one. This was my first get messy uh, journal with season of words. I love this one. That's this one. Um, Gail wants to know what paper weight you prefer. I suck at the whole paper weight thing. So, um, I don't, I use, I buy whatever's on sale at Michael's for the most part. Um, I do like, oh my God, I put a bunch of that, the watercolor paper in here. And I think it was like, it was either 90 pound watercolor paper or higher. Mm. I don't remember what the, the weight was, but I know it was over 90 pounds. Um, and I really liked that one. That was a really nice watercolor that I picked up. It was just a pad that was on sale and I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to pick that up. And I really like, so this journal has most of that paper in it. And then I tend to use a lot of this ivory paper. Let's see. Do I have Courtney it in this says little journal? Called sail weight. Sail weight. 
say, oh, wait, yes. Um, I don't know. I journal on old book pages. Like, I love old book pages. And that is, like, like this whole page is a book page. Mm -hmm. And that is, like, really flimsy. And this one, I, I, I don't know. What, they got this from a journal. So my neighbor, who I babysit their kids sometimes, um, they went to India for a summer, and they brought me back a journal, like a handmade journal. And, of course, I took it apart. <laughs> I'm like, it was very pretty, but I took it apart. I loved the paper. And so I wanted to, you know, mix some of that paper. And it's more like a, it's a fabric. It's like a fabric paper. You can tell it's handmade because it has fibers in it and stuff. I love that type of paper too. Like it's, I, it doesn't really hold like paint very well, but I just like the texture of it. Um, and then I use just regular drawing paper. I think it's like 90 pound drawing paper. That's what um, this paper is. This ivory paper mm -hmm. is drawing paper. It's the it's from you know the Stratmore. I tend to use Stratmore paper, so I forget if it's the brown series. I think it's the brown series because you know how they have the brown, the dark green, the yellow. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that one was brown. I think that was brown drawing paper, and I also use Bristol. I like Bristol paper. Bristol tends to be a little thicker, and uh, the, what is it, the Canson mixed media paper is good, but I'm not, I'm not like a, med I'm not like a paper, you know, picky paper person, I'm just like, oh, I, I like how things feel, so the more the texture of the paper, the more that I would like it, instead of smooth paper, mm -hmm. if, so I like things to have nice texture maybe that's why i like book pages so much because different books have different text you know their pages have different textures and yeah i always go by texture instead of weight i it's gonna get messy so <laughs> doesn't matter what the weight is like this is watercolor paper i can already see because it watercolor paper has mm -hmm. a nice texture to it but yeah this is my season of fairy tales i love this little journal it was a a quilted, I made this quilt thing here. It's funny, this, this one, I, before I bought my own sewing machine, I was buying, I was borrowing my friend's sewing machine and he, he needed it for a project. So he, you know, came and pick it up and everything. And literally the day that he took it away, I was just like, I have an idea for a journal, uh -huh. but I need a sewing machine. Mm -hmm. So instead of waiting for him, I just hand sewed the whole thing. Are you crazy? I did all the quilting by hand, and then I it has an inner. Uh, this is also fabric with like a. I just put paper in the middle, mm. and then I made the little journal because I had that urge to make this journal with these um, fabric pieces that I had, and I didn't have a sewing machine. But now I have my own sewing machine, so. That is fine. But this is one of my favorites. I love the size. It's A6, mm -hmm. so it's about four by six inches size of photograph. A lot of, like, my little journals that go into this TN are that size. Um, but I think most of my journals, these are altered books. They're generally small. Mm -hmm. And then I have, like, I don't discriminate when it comes to binding. So I have one that's in binder rings. That's fun because you can always work on the pages and then put them in. And I have have another one. It's the same. It's like the same thing except what's holding it is these little string mm -hmm. things. This was one. This is an old. This is one of my, not my first art journal. One of my first art journals. I did... There used to be an oh, art journaler. Yes. She's still around. Um, I think her, I don't know how to pronounce her last name correctly, but her name is Kara Hop Hop Hop. Well, I know how to pronounce um, it. It's German, but it was. <laughs> she did a class. I miss called, her class. Uh, of love. And I joined in in 2013, and it was like my first proper art journaling anything, really. And this was the first journal. And most of it is like, I don't even know. I have I have photographs that I took and papers and quotes and stuff. 
and nothing that I do now, really. This was me, ex you know, experimenting. It's fun to look back on it because I don't think I do any of this. It was like half um, memory keeping almost because she had us take photographs. This is probably the only thing that I still do is these little white out poems because they're fun. Um, but yeah, so I went from all of this to what I do now. But I mean, like, we all gotta start. You can see like bits of your style in there and all of that. Like you can see the connection yeah. and like the little bits of what you're gonna keep and all that. Yeah, I can see it in some of them. Like definitely this one. Mm. I see. Uh, I even I even tucked in feathers in here. And I have this was when I was trying to make doily dream catchers and I totally did it. I had to teach myself how to crochet a doily and this was the first doily that I crocheted so I stuck it in here cuz so it's like this one was kind of part memory keeping part experimenting with journaling and stuff and like taking photograph like sort of artsier photographs but this was the summer of self love have a lot of stuff in here mm. Gail is like super inspired by all of your journals. She says she's new to this. So she's still like having a blast experimenting in old moleskins that she'd used uh, previously as daily work calendars. So she really likes the idea of creating a whole book with like a theme. The theme? Well, speaking of calendars, this is my first journal. <laughs> it says my first art journal on it. <laughs> and, um, what I did was. So wait, so um, this is. First, year, what, when when is that first one from? What year? Oh, it was before Summer of Self Love, so it had to have been 2012, mm. like the ending of 2012, um, like my first proper art journal, I guess. But it was in this, like this is a section from that same journal, but I since it was a different theme that I was going with, I kind of separated it. But it was in an old planner that I had. So I had a spiral bound planner that was from like probably 2008 or something, 2009. And I just had it. And, you know, I can't, you, um, it was filled. It had like all my notes and stuff like for the whole year in it. But I don't know. I didn't throw it out. And so what I did was I just collaged over it. So the cover was, I was working on an album cover for an artist in California. And so I was trying to get her name in like calligraphy so the whole page was from that but i liked how it looked so i put some heidi shine on it and just made it into a cover but the pages are all from a planner a used planner that i had and i did a lot of collaging and stuff on it so of course i used a lot of gesso to cover up those planner pages but that's basically what I use. So you can just use anything. Like I think, well, I don't know if you can see it through my camera, but this one, you can see the lines of the planner through whatever that paper is that I put over it. Up close you can see it, but I don't know if you can see it. But I did a lot of collage and put a lot of those girls and did sketches and stuff like around them. That's what this one was. I was following, this was very inspired by, I think she's still around. Her website is nataliemutrix.com or you can search like gen, genuine, genuine major. I think that's what her blog her. is called. Um, she tend to, she back then tended to do a lot of this sort of thing. Like, this is an image transfer. Mm. What she would do is that she would outline, like, magazine clippings with, a like, a black pen. And so I was kind of following her um, and how she did that. So a lot of these, I think this one is also a magazine page that has outlined with black pen. And this one's another one. So I did that oh, a lot in this. 
because I was very inspired by her. And there was another girl, her name was Claire, and her website does not exist anymore. It used to be Cave in the Clouds, and then she changed it over to Monster Serenade. But I loved her art journals. I think I have a lot of the pictures pinned on Pinterest of her journals. Um, but she was another inspiration when I first got into art journaling. And that's what this art journal is heavily influenced by her as well. But yeah, those are my three girls, Natty, Claire, and Kara. And that's kind of how I started, um, started in art journaling was through them. And this one was based on a song called Cool Kids by, I don't remember the band. It's a band of siblings. I forgot what they're called. It's a, I wish that I could be like the cool kids. Cause the cool kids, da -da. That's the song, if you know the song. So the whole, like this whole thing is just about cool kids. Like the whole, it was just inspired by that. So I used a lot of like free people and anthropology. Mm. Again, okay, this was the, uh, the, the planner, it's a grade keeper page. So I just used the planner pages and of course covered up with stuff. Mm. My first attempt at stitching went terribly, terribly wrong. It's right here. <laughs> I mean, you could just call that art so you don't need to <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you can use, I tell people you can use anything for an art journal. Mm. Like. Um, Robin wants to know about the spiral pages. How did you bind them into a journal? I, so I took them individually and I literally ran this this part through the sewing sewing machine. So it's it's just sewn straight down like yeah. that. There we go. So that's that's how this one is too. But this one is just wrapped in a. I wrapped a different uh, drawing paper around it because it had, my drawing paper had all this cool stuff on it and I liked it. So I just wrapped it around and then just sewed straight. And this is me before I knew how to sew. So I have like all these wonky pieces <laughs> on the back. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's, it's held, it's held. So that's how these guys are bound okay. like that. Okay. We are starting to run over the time, majorly. <laughs> but uh, again, we lost the last question that we're going to answer here. Um, is your so Debbie's talking about your transference class, and she wants to know about the paper that she uses for the image transfer. She says that she's found that the thicker page, the thicker paper works better, like not book pages. Is that normal? Oh, like yeah. Yeah. Like your base paper? Yes. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Not the transfer paper. Mm -hmm. Not what the image you're transferring. Oh, okay. I just transfer on anything. You did on book pages <laughs> but that's, as well. I'm just like, uh, let me see. I think that, wait, where's that journal? This was a transfer on a book page. I don't know what I did to it. I'm pretty sure it has a little gesso behind it. Mm -hmm. I kind of gessoed on the book page, but this, I have journal, I have transferred on a book page, mm -hmm. but of course it has gesso behind it because book paper is too, it's too porous and a little too flimsy for a transfer, but that is a great tip that it, mm -hmm. that the heavier the paper, I did not know that. So I learned something mm -hmm. new. Thank you. Debbie, maybe try See if you can do book pages with a whole bunch of gesso and see if that like then helps thicken them and makes them stronger maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would just I would gesso the book page. She says she's gonna try that, yeah. She's gonna try that, yeah. Before a transfer. I mean, what transfer would work on a book page is the packing tape the clear tape Ooh, transfer yeah. that that would work on an old book page. Do I have one that's on an old book page? No, I don't have one that's on an old book page, but I have one on this um, 
this is copy paper that I tea dyed. So it's kind of like old book page since it's mm -hmm. just the regular copy paper that I actually did the whole tea dye process and that tends to make the paper more crinkly and more delicate. Um, and this is a packing tape transfer on that. So mm -hmm. the packing tape transfers would, you know, the clear tape um, would work really well on a, on a book page or a page that is a bit more delicate than I think the, the gel medium. Mm -hmm. the gel mediums tends to be more heavy, like a heavier. That makes so sense. that's also an option. And there's the, you can find that on the blog, on the, the Get Messy blog, the, mm. the clear tape tutorial. Yeah. Debbie, if you can't find it, they just I'll send you the link directly. Okay. Heidi, are we not going to answer your question? We can answer that like in the Facebook group or in the forums or something. Uh, if anyone else has any more questions for Tiffany, they're starting to like the questions are like rolling in now. <laughs> but um, I can't see the chat, so I'll like no, go through the chat you know, afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, obviously, Tiffany's not gonna go away. I'm not gonna go away. We all like you can keep asking the questions. And um, oh, there was a request to show your your creating space. So I said I'm gonna force you to do that on your Instagram stories or something to share a bit more of your space. Okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I've been planning to do like a video on it. It's just I really want one of those Calyx shelves mm. to put all the things on it. I'm a very organizing person in boxes, but I haven't gone to IKEA yet. But I'll show how I have everything sort of yeah. set up now. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So yeah, thank you so much, Tiffany, for insight into your creative process, into the things you create, showing us your journals and letting us find out more about you is very really awesome. Um, yeah, and we're all going to be, I'm going to host a hangout now if anyone wants to join, if anyone's like super inspired and wants to keep on with the with the creating and with all of this. Everyone is saying thank you, Tiffany. Everyone really enjoyed it. Thank you. I'll probably pop into the hangout so we yeah. can see each other. And then maybe you can ask me questions. I will. Let me That's also that. an option. There we go. You can ask it directly, face to screen to face. Um, yeah. I'm going to make, I'm trying to figure out where, let me make a hangout and then I'll add it. Emily's asking where it is. Okay, I'm busy making one right now. Oh, to date. <laughs> and I'm going to share it now. So you say you're going to join us. Yeah, so wherever. Well, I just opened up the chat. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I would have to, like, read through everything. <laughs> okay, there we go. I've got this. It is in the chat now. See you guys there. If you if you want to chat to Tiffany, you want to chat to each other, we're going to be hanging out over there. So it's not done. But the missing conversation <laughs> is out. Done. Bye, guys. This is just... Bye, Bye. <laughs>